The Zero Power Reactor 3 was placed into operation by Argonne National Laboratories, Idaho Division, October 20th, 1955. One of a family of critical facilities preceded by ZPR-1 for the Nautilus reactor and ZPR-2 for the Savannah River reactors. The ZPR-3 is an extremely flexible machine for investigating fast reactor physics, providing a proof test of the physics of a particular design and a range of experimental information to improve the accuracies of calculations. In fast reactors, the mean free path of neutrons is in the order of centimeters. Hence, a reactor made up of components of thickness equal to a fraction of a centimeter essentially looks like a homogeneous reactor to the fast neutron. Basically, the zero power reactor is a machine of two halves in which fissionable material can be assembled. Each half is a square matrix of 961 numbered tubes. Previous experiments have determined those quantities of core material that may be safely loaded in each half. These quantities are dependent upon the dilution with other materials and the ratio of enriched uranium to depleted uranium. Since operation of ZPR-3 began, more than 30 critical assemblies have been studied, ranging in critical mass from 46 to 221 kilograms of uranium-235, and varying in composition, size, and shape. Loaded according to the experimental program, these halves are then driven together to form a critical assembly. No coolant is provided. Consequently, this reactor must be operated at low power. Determination of critical mass, flux distribution, control rod worth, and core arrangements has provided a whole range of experimental facts for application in any fast reactor system. In the present fast reactor program, the ZPR-3 is being applied to the study of the nuclear aspects of the experimental Breeder Reactor 2 engineering design. The configuration and composition, as specified by the designers for EBR-2, is an enriched core having a height of 14 and 22 hundredths inches and a diameter of approximately 19 inches. The core contains 14 modified fuel subassemblies, which are utilized as control and safety rods. The enriched core is surrounded by a blanket having an outer diameter of approximately 61 inches and a height of 58 and 1 half inches. These dimensions are then translated into a loading configuration for full-scale mock-up in the critical facility. Core, control rod, and blanket regions are laid out in composition and dimensional details within drawers and fractions of drawers. These plans are then applied to the individual drawer loading diagrams. After final approval of the loading pattern, these diagrams are utilized as a guide in the loading of each drawer. The highly enriched uranium-235 in the form of 1 8 inch thick plates is color-coded red to distinguish it from the depleted uranium, which is black. Only two drawers may be loaded at any one time on the loading table. Since the distribution of materials in a drawer has a pronounced effect on reactivity, the desired arrangement must be maintained. The drawers are loaded according to their corresponding drawer masters with uranium as the fissionable material stainless steel as the structural and cladding material and low density aluminum to represent the sodium coolant. Aluminum has been selected to represent sodium because of its similarity in cross section for fast neutrons. To confirm the equivalence between aluminum and sodium to be used in the EBR2, it is necessary to substitute containers filled with sodium. This same experimental procedure is used to determine the reactivity effect of the fission products which will be present in the EBR2 fuel. 
As the drawers are completed, they are checked, then transferred to the adjacent shielded room. Loading of the two halves proceeds simultaneously until the mock-up is complete. Five empty channels in each half indicate the position of withdrawn control drawers of the critical assembly. The central enriched uranium core, the mocked up EBR2 control rods, and surrounding depleted uranium blanket have now been arranged according to engineering design. The blanket region immediately adjacent to the core has been loaded in drawers, while the blanket region outside this immediate area is of more coarse structure, although maintaining the same composition. Mock-up is complete, and preparations are made for final remote assembly of the two subcritical halves. Oilers and air pressure are checked, and the assembly room is cleared of personnel. The operator activates the scram interlocks, neutron source drive mechanisms, and begins to move the halves together. The reactor is assembled at a rate of 30 inches per minute until the separation is 18 inches. At the same time, four safety rods in each half are inserted. These eight rods must be fully inserted before the separation can become less than 18 inches. One rod in each half is a control rod and is left withdrawn until the halves have been completely closed. As the separation of the halves decreases from 18 inches to 3 inches, the speed is reduced to 6 inches per minute. And the final closing is at a rate of 1 half inch per minute. The slow speed of assembly is fundamental to the safe operation of this machine. With the halves together, the control rods are inserted until at some rod position criticality is achieved. In comparison to reactors designed to remove neutron absorbers to produce a self-sustaining chain reaction, ZPR3 adds either fuel or reflector material. This method of control will also be used in EBR2. Though subcritical, the power level is due to multiplication of the source. When the level is high enough to assure criticality, the source is removed. The reactor is now critical. After criticality is reached, a constant power level can be maintained. The position of this calibrated control rod is used for the determination of the critical mass of this mock-up. Confirming information is determined by moving the remaining portion of the rod into the reactor. The reactor is now supercritical and will increase in power exponentially. Rate of rise in power thus recorded is a measure of the excess reactivity of the assembly. After obtaining sufficient information, a scheduled manual scram is initiated by the operator. The control rods are ejected from the assembly under air pressure, and the halves are automatically driven apart. These occasional scrams are intended to check the performance of the safety devices. Normal shutdown is accomplished by withdrawing the rods at slow speed. The critical mass of this mock-up was 161 kilograms of uranium-235. The completion of this part of the program on ZPR-3 will define the nuclear characteristics of a uranium-235 core. Subsequent studies will investigate plutonium for fast reactors. And the ZPR-3 facility will continue yielding information to improve the accuracies of physics calculations on a wide range of fast reactor designs.